Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. This video is the second in a mini-series looking at WordPress security plugins. In this video, taking a look at using iTheme security together with the BBQ Firewall plugin. iTheme security is one of the long-time security solutions. It's available in both a free and premium version. However, it doesn't include a firewall. The BBQ Firewall plugin is a lightweight and trouble-free firewall that also comes in a free and premium version. The two plugins complement each other. So let's start with the BBQ Firewall plugin. It's created by Jeff Starr, who's the author of the well-respected 6G, 7G PHP firewall. And basically what the plugin does is it brings in the firewall rules from the 6G, 7G firewall and makes them available in WordPress without needing to manually edit the HT access file. You can see that the plugin has over 100,000 active installs. 110 five-star reviews, and two out of two support issues resolved in the last two months. Some of the things that the BBQ firewall protects your site against are SQL injection attacks, executable file uploads, directory traversal attacks, unsafe character requests, excessively long requests, PHP remote file execution, cross-site scripting and related attacks, helps to protect against bad bots, bad refers, bad post content, and other types of bad requests. The free version of the BBQ Firewall plugin has no settings. It's literally an install and let it do its work. And it's a very performant and problem-free plugin. Here I have a website with a BBQ firewall, the free version installed, and this is the settings page. As you see, there are no settings. The pro version of the BBQ firewall is available from the author's website, plugin-planet.com. And if we look at the pricing table, we see that it's available for lifetime, $25 for one site, $50 for three sites, $100 for 10 sites and $200 for unlimited sites. Here I have the pro version of the BBQ firewall installed. You can see there are a couple of admin pages here. On the settings page, you can enable or disable the basic rules, the advanced rules, and the custom rules. You can disable BBQ for logged in users. You can limit URL requests to 2,000 characters. You can block empty blank user agents. You can enable strict mode. You can send an email alert. You can set up a redirect when a request is blocked and have a custom message. Set the status code. You can remove disabled patterns and whitelist an IP. When we look at the firewall rules themselves, we see here our basic, advanced, and custom tabs. And as opposed to the free version where there are no settings or no options, with the pro version, you can disable any of the rules that you want to. You can test a rule, and you can see how many times the rule has been invoked. Okay, and then, and on the advanced rules, we have the same thing. And then there's an area where you can add your own custom rules. When I was adding my own rules, I reached out to the author and he responded very quickly and was very helpful. There's a tools menu item also where you can import some custom rules if you've created them on another site. And you can reset settings, patterns, and counts. The WP Hive website tests plugins in the WordPress plugin directory across a number of areas. I don't think it's the be all end all or final word, but it is one data point among many. And let's look and see what the test of the BBQ firewall plugin shows. So as we can see, it tests memory usage impact on page speed, PHP errors, warnings, notices, JavaScript issues, 
PHP compatibility, WordPress compatibility, database footprint, activation errors, resource errors, and if it's frequently updated. And there are no problems found with the BBQ firewall plugin. So that's kind of a nice sanity check there. Some things to keep in mind about what the BBQ firewall plugin does not do is remember that it's based on the 6G, 7G PHP firewall. That means its rules are not WordPress specific. It doesn't have any rules related to specific plugin vulnerabilities, nor does it have just-in-time updates to protect against the latest zero-day threats. It doesn't provide login form protection, two-factor authentication, malware scans, and many of the other important lockdown security measures. It's just a PHP firewall. For that reason, I wouldn't use the BBQ firewall alone on a WordPress site. Because it's so problem-free and performant, I don't see any problem using it with other security plugins. And I think it makes a good pairing with iTheme security because iTheme security doesn't include any firewall at all. I do have a video that does a complete walkthrough and review of the BBQ firewall plugin if you want to take a look at that. Okay, now let's take a look at iTheme Security. iTheme Security also has a free and a pro version. The free version in the WordPress plugin directory has more than a million active installs. It has 3,360 five-star reviews, but only three out of 26 of the support issues have been closed. I have a site here with the free version of iTheme Security installed. This is an ad for the pro version. You see there are a dashboard settings, a log page, and a link to buy the pro version. My dashboard is pretty empty because I have the REST API disabled on this site, so there isn't much to see here. We'll see the dashboard in action when we look at the pro version. But here is the settings page. And just like with all-in-one WP security, the challenge is how do you organize all of the settings to make configuration easy. When you first install iThemes, it has a wizard that walks you through some of the options. But once that's done, then you fall into this page with these menu items. And let's take a quick look at the options here even in the free version you have the option of two-factor authentication you have a band user option you have local brute force so this is after so many login attempts then lock the ip address out and it also has network brute force where the iTheme security sites share information that's what this option is to share information so when someone was banned on another site several hours ago and they then come to your site to try to brute force it, it doesn't have to let them try multiple login attempts. Now, one thing I wanted to point out, you see these little cogs here, and we'll see some other places. There are options that are kind of inside underneath, and I'm not a big fan of hiding the options behind an icon. It's too easy to miss. But let's just look at some. See here, you have automatically ban admin user, and then after so many login attempts, ban for so long. You also notice that we move from the features menu to the lockouts menu. Let's go back to features. We run lockouts, okay. Then there's a site check. It will monitor for changes to standard WordPress files, and also the option to do a site scan. Then under utilities, you can force SSL, and you can achieve this other ways, like, you know, with your hosting. There's the option for manual, you know, kind of on-demand, but also to schedule database backups. And so that's a nice recovery feature to have a database backup. And then this is related to how iTheme Security detects IP addresses. Okay, so we looked at those features. If we look at user groups, this is the free version. You can see that you have settings for who can manage iThemes, the access the security dashboard, enforce strong passwords, 
and refuse compromised passwords. It will check the Have I Been Pond website database. And if your user is reusing passwords, it won't allow that. And then you can edit the group. So if you have multiple roles on the site, you can create kind of groups to apply the rules to. And you can also apply them to individual users. Under configure, these are some of those options that are behind the cog. This is how long to lock a user out and the ban threshold and the logout message. If you want to have a whitelist and logging, this is the default ban list, and these are the settings that were behind the cogs. Notifications, this is you can set up options. You can have a digest or send in individual instances when someone is locked out or something's found during a scan. Then there's an advanced icon. And these are, you see, there's system tweaks. You can protect system files, disable directory browsing, and disable PHP execution. There are WordPress tweaks. You can disable the XML RPC service. You can disable the REST API. And you can force users to have a unique nickname and disable user archives. And then this is an option again to hide the WordPress login page, basically. And so you can use this to change the URL. So instead of wp-login.php, it might be something like my login or whatever you want to call it. And this doesn't increase the security of the site, but it does cut down on the churn caused by bots that are trying to brute force your site and trying to attack the login page. Then under tools, you know, you can identify the server IP, change your user ID 1. Some people think that that's a security issue. You can change the database table prefix. You can check file permissions, so that's nice. Server config rules, the WP config rules, and you can change WordPress salts. So that's the free version of iThemes. The pro version of iThemes security is sold on the iThemes website. If we look at that, you can see there's a sale right at this moment. But basically, it's $80 for one site, $127 for 10 sites, $199 for unlimited sites per year. Or there's an option with a bundle. So I have a website here with the pro version of iThemes security. This is the dashboard in action. You know, it gives you some site scans. I think this does have a malware scanner, but it's only the front page, if I'm correct. Then your update summary, your lockout information and band overview. So, you know, they're telling you basically, showing you how that it's working and your security profiles. And then number of brute force attacks by day. And you can see <clears throat> this is something I've seen quite common that uh, there are waves when sites will get hit. You'll have a site that'll have almost no activity for a long time and then all of a sudden it'll get pounded. And then here's a list of banned IPs and you can remove the ban if you have a membership site or something and someone accidentally locked themselves out. If we look at the settings, this is similar, but there are a few more features. Here we are on login security. And this is where I see kind of the advantages of the pro version coming in, is we're gonna see that in relation to user and user login security, there are quite a few more options in the pro version. You have the option to allow passwordless login, privilege escalation, like maybe you want to let a support person who needs to log in your site to fix a problem or something, you can give them a user ID and it will automatically downgrade that account after a certain amount of time so you don't forget. And then the option for trusted devices. If we look at lockouts, in addition to the ones that we had in the free version, there's also this magic links. So you can bypass the lockout option and you have a recapture option. If we look at site check, in addition to the ones that were available in the free version, we also have user logging and version management. 
The free version, I think, now will check and notify you if you have a plugin or theme that has a known vulnerability so that you update. The pro version has an extra feature that you can check if there's a plugin or theme or WordPress, you know, and it has a known vulnerability, you can check an option and it will automatically update that if there's an update available. And then under utilities, the pro version adds the option for geolocation. What geolocation does is it gives you the option to ban by country. So if we look at user groups, we have the same options that we had in the free version, but there's also an option for password age. So you can force people to renew their password, you know, every six months or whatever you want. If we look at the configure, I think these are going to be the same that we kind of looked at up here, just the configuration screens. Notifications are the same. I think advanced is going to be the same. Under tools, that looks to be the same. But one thing that is additional in the pro version is you can export and import your settings. So make it faster to uh, configure the second site. So that's a nice feature. And then one other thing in the pro version is that we have, I think, much more verbose logging for activity logs. Not only do we have the login logs, which we might have that in the free version, but here's where I updated a plugin, SiteKit by Google. So you can see that it has activity logging in addition to the security logging. If we go to WP Hive to check iTheme security, again, just one data point among others. And I mention that because I don't think you should go solely by what it says here, but I do think it's interesting and worth looking at. Okay, so we see that most of the things there aren't an issue, but it does seem to have more than an average memory usage. So it uses 1.2 megs of memory, and that's more than 89% of plugins in the repository. I haven't seen an issue with iTheme security in terms of memory, but it's something to keep in mind. So in summary about iTheme security, years ago when I was first testing security plugins, I tried both WordFence and iTheme security and ended up with iTheme security because WordFence had a reputation for being resource intensive. Consequently, I've been using iTheme security on some of my sites for a long time. And for the past few years, I've been pairing it with the BBQ firewall plugin. I think it's a good combination. I have contacted iTheme support in the past and they were always polite and got back in a reasonable amount of time. But let's note what we saw in the WordPress plugin directory for the free version that only a few of the tickets had been closed. And that's a little different than the all-in-one WP security and firewall where there was good support of free users. And as we'll see in subsequent videos, there are other security plugins that are providing support for free users. One of the things that kind of jumped out at me when comparing the free and the pro version of iThemes was that a lot of the pro features are centered around the user management and user login and providing different features to make it easy for users to log in. And that makes me think that the pro version might be a good match for people who are running a membership site where those kind of features might come in handy. All in all, I feel that iTheme security paired with the BBQ Firewall plugin is one of the good solutions for securing your WordPress site. In the previous video, we looked at all-in-one WP security and firewall. In subsequent videos, we're going to look at patch stack and at WordFence and at a few other security options. So I just want to mention again that there is an overview article on the WebTNG website that has all this information together. It also has a chart that compares 30 of the security related features across the different plugins. So I'd recommend taking a look at that if it's something you want to dive into more deeply. There are also other walkthroughs, reviews, and videos available on the WebTNG website. 
So I hope you found this look at iTheme security and the BBQ firewall interesting and useful. Thank you for watching.